Hey guys, so as I mentioned in a previous video, we're going to add cooldowns to our abilities and it's not going to be that difficult because we can reuse some of the functions we have already made. So first thing that we're going to do is let's create event dispatcher and we will do that in ability component so we can open it or edit it from the player and in usability. We'll just call it when we pass all of these checks that we can actually use the ability and then when we start the cooldown by creating the cooldown component, we can also tell quick slots to show some image overlay that will track the cooldown separately. So let's create event dispatcher and this one will be uh, start quick slot cooldown. And what we will need here is click on this plus icon and we will add ability that we're going to activate which will be type abilities enumerator and we're also going to add one more parameter and this one will be cooldown and this will be float compile it and now we're just going to call it before we execute ability so straight after we create this component, because we're not going to be using cooldown from the component, we're going to track it separately. So let's drag this out, this dispatcher, call it. Ability will be the ability and cooldown we have here from the data table. So we can just redirect this. Straighten it and then connect it to here as well. You can compile and save. And now we just need to bind it in the cooldowns. So this is just calling to anyone that will listen. So we need to make sure the cooldown uh, widget will listen, uh, not cooldown, sorry, quick slots. So let's open quick slots, quick slot widget. And here on beginning, we need to do one more binding. So since we have a player reference, we can just get ability component directly. And from there, we're going to bind events on cooldown. Hmm, cooldown something. Start quick slot cooldown. Is one here. And then what we need to do is from the event, just search create event, click on this one and we're going to create matching event. And this one we can just call it, call start cooldown. And here we don't want to start cooldown on all of the quick slots. We just want to check if it actually has the corresponding ability. So we're going to do branch and we're going to check if the ability equals enumerator the ability that we have stored inside player inside the map array so get the player reference which we have here get ability cooldowns or quick slot ability map is one here and we're going to find ability on the slot index so each slot index will check it separately and if you have found it so this value will return true if there is some and boolean it does equals this ability we're trying to activate then we can activate it by continuing here so we're going to create one more variable and this will be cooldown or you can just drag from the cooldown and promo to variable and change this to float set it here and we're going to set it to this cooldown make sure you're setting it after the branch because if you rewrite it here it will rewrite cooldown for all of the quick slots we don't want that this i forgot to connect so this needs to go to branch set cooldown to zero and then we're going to create overlay so designer we will create one more image because I don't want to use image overlay. This is just for when we actually run out of items we have on the quick slots. So let's add one more image. And this one will be cooldown overlay 
just make sure you don't confuse it with image overlay because then it might not work correctly and what we're going to do is we're going to anchor it to the whole thing but now we don't have a material that we can use but in the video with buffs we have created material that is let me just quickly show you uh, third person and materials and we do have this radial progress bar material let's duplicate this so the material not the material instance duplicate it and this one will be cooldown material underscore m and i'm going to click quickly show for those people that didn't actually make the buff video and this is what we're doing there's texture coordinates you got some values which is scalar parameters custom rotator subtract my one minus one this and we adding it there is some percentage floor and this goes for, to the material which is user interface and blend mode is translucent and then the second branch goes from this part here 0 0.5 thickness we have here subtract and these gradients and what it does is we do have this radial percent bar which is if you put it to 0.1 percent it's basically 10 percent of the bar 0 0.5 is half of it and one is basically 100 percent it only goes zero to one so we're going to use it for cooldowns as well and the way we're going to use it is we're going to change the thickness to 0 0.5 which is the maximum you can set to here and that is basically full circle but since our quick slots are square what i'm going to do is compile and save it let's go to quick slots we're going to set it here actually let's create material instance from it so right click create material instance same name and everything and i'm going to set it to cooldown overlay which will be cooldown overlay material instance and now as you can see it would be just inside the slot so we're going to make offset minus 40 on each side I think minus 40 will be enough and this way if you have a percentage so let me just change it to maybe 0 0.25 you will see that this is how the cooldown will look like so this is the world of warcraft style so you just get a square cooldown but for now we can see the outside as well so let's go to this canvas panel that is wrapping it and we're going to change clipping to clip to bounce and i will clip it compile and save so now we do have this material we're also going to make sure it's a variable and now we need to go to graph and first thing we're going to do is let's also hide it so in the cooldown overlay let's change the visibility to uh, hidden then in the graph we're going to drag it out so cooldown overlay and first thing we're going to set visibility to visible but we can do actually we can do not hit testable self only so just in case you're clicking on it when it's on the cooldown and you're trying to set the new slot you can actually click on it so this won't be in the way and then we need to have one more variable you can drag from here promote it to variable and this one will be seconds disconnect it make sure default is zero when you compile and then we need to actually start the timer by function which will track which will increase the seconds and then when it reaches the cooldown that we set it will remove it so first let's set timer by function name function name we need to create and this will be uh, functions and update cooldown in this update cooldown we don't need any inputs go back to oven graph copy the name and paste it here it will be going 0 0.01 seconds it will be looping and what we also want to do while this function is looping we want to update 
that image overlay with the percentage. For that, we need to actually create dynamic material instance so we can update it dynamically. And again, we have created this in conditions. So find conditions icon, condition icon. And here in the graph, we do a function, this set radial bar percent, which is this one here. Copy it, we're going to paste it in a quick slot. And this one will be set cooldown overlay percent. Here we need to right click on this variable, create radial bar reference. I'm going to call it uh, cooldown overlay material ref. It's a bit long, but that's what it is. So first we're checking if it's valid, because if it's valid, we're just going to set the percentage of the parameter. But if it's not valid, we need to create it again. Here we're not creating radial progress bar, we're creating overlay, uh, what is it, cooldown overlay material. We don't need to set flags or anything, then it will promote it to variable and then we set it not to radial progress bar, but to careful not image overlay, it needs to be cooldown overlay. Right. I think here maybe we can do material instance, I'm not sure. I need to test it. So right, this will be setting the percentage that we pass it to. Compile and save. And now in the event graph, we can go to this function, which is update cooldown. And what we're going to do here is first we're going to get a seconds, which is currently zero. We're going to add to it. Since this function is looping every 0 0.01 seconds, so that's what it's, we're going to add to seconds. And then we're going to set seconds. And uh, then if the seconds are greater or equal the cooldown, we're going to stop the function, so branch. And we're going to clear timer by function name. And function name is this update cooldown, so self update cooldown. And then on false, we don't need to do anything, but we also need to call this set cooldown overlay percent. And for percentage, we need to divide seconds by the cooldown, so by this one here, and that will give us percentage between 0 to 1. But since we want to take away from the cooldown, because when we show overlay, it will be full. So what we need to do is subtract. Disconnect this one, it needs to go to the second one, and here just put one. So it's one minus, so it's subtracting from one, and that will be the percentage. Right, one more thing. If we stop this function, what we want to do also is get this cooldown overlay and hide it again. So set visibility hidden. And then one last thing, back to event graph. Before this, let's also make sure by setting um, the seconds variable to zero, because it will remember it on this quick slot. So second time, if we pressed cooldown, it would already have like 10 seconds on it or something. So you always need to make sure it's zero. Compile and save. Save all. And now this should already work. So we have it set. Are we setting it to 0% as well? No. So one more thing. We also going to set cooldown overlay percent manually to 0% or to 1. Sorry, to 1 because we're removing from 1. So this will be full when we start and then we will remove from it. Now let's play the game. Pick up the weapon. I'm going to equip it and then go to abilities, set this one. Oh, something's wrong with the quick slot. Hmm. Now quick slots are not updating, probably because I added 
binding and I forgot to connect it back. So in a quick slot in event graph. Yeah, there we go. So after the binding needs to continue. And now test it. Abilities at first one, at second one. And then we're going to press first one. So I press one on the keyboard. There we go. Press second one. But we only got one second cooldown. But as you can see, it's working fine. I'm going to change the cooldown on the abilities. So in Instructs and DT, Abilities, Stone Form. I'm just going to, for testing, do like 10 seconds. And well, wind will be five or I don't know, 15 seconds. It's obviously not final. This is still while we're in the testing, testing phases. So again, equip the weapon, equip the quick slots. And now stone form, bam, cooldown is there. And this one's working fine as well. Now I can press it again until the cooldowns expires. And now press it, second one. And it's all tracking separately based on the actual cooldown. All right. So this is World of Warcraft style. It's obviously not very nice now because we need to actually make it look a little bit better. So let's go to quick slots and let's change this cooldown overlay to like almost black color but I ch then change it to 0 0.5 maybe is that gonna be visible on the even darker yeah like that and one more test abilities Pick up weapon, stone form. Okay, this is weird, they didn't change it at all. Uh, okay, my bad, let's copy the tint. Or let's open it because we won't be able to add it and let's drag this color up here. And then let's go to quick slots, graph and this set cooldown overlay percent because here we're setting the image but it resets the tint which we need to make slate color open it up and uh, select this color otherwise it will reset so this is where you set it and now abilities one more time First one, there we go, and second one. Probably I will make it a little bit darker, so like 0 0.8 opacity, because you can't see it very well, or 0 0.9 even. 0 0.9. And one last test, I promise. this one and this one press one press second one there we go now there we not go because that's not the thing i changed it again in the wrong one so here or in the abilities or in the sorry in the quick slots i am really confused today here you need to change it so 0 0.9 there we go so I promise it was the last test, but obviously you don't have to follow anymore. This is just tweaking little bits and pieces. Nah, that's better. Alright, so I hope you like this one. And in next one we can actually do like a damage multiplier for abilities. So our whirlwind shouldn't just be causing the damage that we currently have on a player. But we can multiply damage by like 2 or 1.5. So it will cause actually more damage with skills and then we can customize it on different skills and stuff like that. So I'll see you then. Bye.